Welcome to the Kumble Corner. I'm Super Joshi, joined by Karan Mehta, both of us um, a little bit more west of Ghaziabad. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure if you haven't already, hit subscribe either on YouTube if you're watching this um, or on any podcast app that you are checking this out on, Spotify or otherwise. Um, and on socials, Facebook, Insta, X, uh, just search Kumble Corner, you'll find us. That's Kumble with a K, obviously. And because we love alliteration, Corner with a K. Uh, this is the podcast all about Indian cricket, where we drop kind of deep knowledge, deep insights, and also hella mad predictions that come true. Like Karan Mehta last week said, I predict a Ravi Chandran Ashwin century, didn't you? You, you said that, right? You said that. It's, yep. it's on record. Yep. Called out. I knew it. The vibes were high. He lost playing Chennai. He's the king. Um, I don't wear a cape, but someone has to be the hero. And I basically, like, I turned Hardik Pandya's career around. Um, I triggered Ashwin into potentially being one of our more stable batters, which we'll touch upon later because our top order we need to discuss. Oh, yeah. Um, talking of the top order, it wasn't just your prediction. Knuckle Bande, who unfortunately couldn't join us today because he has to work, hashtag lame, um, <laughs> pred also predicted a century for Bunt, uh, Rishabh Bunt, which was nice. Um, you know what? In the second innings, I was thinking it's now... Ashwin's bowled a few overs. Um, he hasn't taken any wickets. Is he now in the side just as a batting all-rounder? Um, <laughs> but then, obviously, he really did, which we will come back to. Um, should, we, should we just talk about what we're talking about today? Let's give, it, let's give our, our listeners, um, our, our viewers, a little agenda of what's happening. We'll, of course, look back at the first test match of the uh, India-Bangladesh series, Bangladesh in India. Um, and then we'll touch on the IPL, because already there's some madness going on, um, as well as Shakib Al-Hassan. Um, there's some, some deeper stuff going on with him. And uh, we'll preview the next test, which is in Kanpur, which has a different type of soil. Again, um, the soil we touched on last time. Uh, so, right. Sorry, Karen. Should we, do you want to get into the test match and, and start where you want to start? And I'm really, firstly, I'm really glad that you were very nice to, to Bangladesh last time it would have been really embarrassing had we been slagging them off and then basically being like what five for three uh before lunch i mean it wasn't that bad but you know what i mean yeah i mean i appreciate you uh dismissing the fact that i also called for an innings victory in that same uh Austrian century rant um they're good they're I, it's similar to what i kind of expect from countries that are playing india that are still trying to reach that pedestal where it's a sort of composure. They lost six wickets for 40 runs um, on, and just trying to be aggressive, which I can respect to an extent. It just wasn't necessarily the right balls to be aggressive on. And, um, and we kind of like, we, in the beginning of the match, I didn't feel comfortable with where we're at because our top order was a little bit um, shaky to say the least. And a lot of it is it's the, same issues that have plagued this team. Um, so it doesn't really matter who's the coach. It's, it's, uh, I just can't stop thinking about Vera. The first wicket is the most classical Vera wicket you can possibly imagine. Within 10 balls, six dumps, he's going to jab at it without fail. Um, the better bowlers will at least put him in two binds. This was a no-nothing shot that had no business even having a bat towards it. And Vera did it. Second innings, um, spin is, I think, not necessarily his confidence is rattled, but he's slightly less sure of everything, and he assumes, I think, now the worst. Three years ago, Vera reviews that, even if he doesn't touch it. I could have gone straight on the pads. You know Vera's hands are up in review just as quickly as the umpire's hand goes up for a wicket. Um, but he did, he did speak to Gil, and Gil kind of said, you're pretty plumb there, my friend. Well, yeah. I mean, Gil, Gil's not going to see that inside edge. He's not. That has to be... That's, it, was a, it was a slight neck. The only person that can... No one's going to see it. The only person that can feel it is Virat. Um, so I'm not going to give too much grief to Shubnam there, especially because he played pretty damn well towards the that second innings. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it was a good game. Good match. Um, 
I think we mentioned it, as we said on the first podcast, I think it was very intentional that the BCCI had Bangladesh solely practice on uh, block settle pitches, which is more turn driven, which which we'll see now in the second match. But I think that pace attack and the shot selection really was sort of um, no correlation to what they were trying to do and what the pitch was offering. So uh, this next match will be will be a new sort of battle because it's going to be spin heavy. But yeah, that's sort of sort of. And then I, I mean, I'll let you talk about Rishabh and bring in the Ashram stats. But it was fun to see Rishabh back in test matches, the way that we know he's capable of playing, getting him. And I don't want to be like England and say we're only, this match is just basically a warm-up for Australia. <laughs> but it kind of is. And so, especially for him, getting back into uh, red ball cricket for the first time in like 630 days or whatever it was. So a lot of things to be excited about. A lot of things to be excited about. Um, hopefully third time's lucky for the World Test Championship. That's a good way to start yeah, hopefully Ashwin gets to play um, in the final this time. Um, assuming India make it, which I think is a pretty strong chance of. I mean, it's true. You know, everything is a warm-up for the Ashes all the time. Um, so that's Not probably... the Ashes. No, this, this is... When I say the Ashes, I mean, I said that tongue-in-cheek in terms of Australia, what you said, basically. Yeah. Um, I can't well, look. in that respect. <laughs> yes, just me, Jesval. Got a, a 50 in the first... He was the only one of the top order, really. I suppose Pant got a 40, a 39. And he hit a ball, which he, he shouldn't really have. Like, he basically thought he was vintage Sewag, where he could just stand, no foot movement, and just scream something, you know, through the through the offside. Um, but, you know, he, he wasn't, and he nicked it. A bit like Sewag, actually. Uh, but, yeah, Jeswal got a 56. Um, Sharma, 6. Shubman, Duck. Bharat, 6. Um, I saw something about your uh, your boys there, Sherman Coley, didn't play any Red Bull domestic before this. Might have been an idea just to have a, a cheeky innings just to, to come on. I know you are legends in the game, but you're both kind of, you know, 35-ish. Um, eyesight's failing. You just need that muscle memory to kick in a bit, you know? See, I disagree with that. I, I saw I saw a couple of pundits saying that they didn't play any Dooley Trophy matches and that's why they're playing the way they are. Um like you said, they're older. They don't. I don't think any injury risk is worth them playing against a India C or whatever the fuck. Um, and it's like, it, like if Boomer didn't get any wickets in this inning in this match, would we say, oh, Boomer needed to play too? I don't think so. I think we know what they're capable of. I don't think it was rust as much of just loose playing. I think coming off the World Cup win, and I guess a sort of. Un- Virat had a baby as well, right? So yeah. And an uncanny series against Sri Lanka that's sort of thrown in there for Gauthi's opening series. Um, mm-hmm. I think that I'm okay with them not playing. I don't think these results are necessarily indicative of that. And I think it's also one of those things that if they got out quickly um, and say they both scored centuries and the dually would have been like, oh, well, now they're a little bit tired. I wish they took that time off to rest. There's a lot of cricket coming up, a lot of red ball cricket coming up, a lot of big matches, a lot of big teams. I, I'm... I'm okay with them not playing any Red Bull warm-up matches. I don't think they need to. So what you're saying is, essentially, for players of that stature and that calibre, Bangladesh is an okay warm-up. Is what yeah, really Bangladesh saying. is India's <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I've got complete... I feel comfortable saying that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. And Jaiswal had that cover drive in the first innings that was so beautiful that I went out of my way to record the replay on my phone off my TV and took a picture of his posture again in the replay only to wake up to find out BCC. I locked my account for 48 hours for breaking DCMA laws again. And it's, I think like their third or fourth time getting on my ass for that, which, which is annoying in terms of drawing the game as I got on Twitter and see every NFL highlight from every imaginable angle possible and MLB and NHL and basketball. And, and I'm, I've done it for the, uh, I've done it for England matches. I've done it for any match that doesn't include India and nothing really comes of it, but India, God forbid me show a replay of a replay to my 700 followers. When we get Jay Shaw on the podcast, we'll ask him about this because this is not 
Quinn look uh, that's just to clarify we've yes. not thought about approaching him but yeah, it's just audience, he's going to come on the phone yeah yeah I mean um, <laughs> things that may sometimes happen um, file it under that uh, so alright well you've obviously upset the BCCI by stealing their intellectual property um, but that's okay yeah we don't they, 48 hours later you were back in action Back in action. Back in action. Um, who also, like Richard Bunk was back in action. Um, K.R. Rahul was back in action, which was, um, you know, we were, were kind of hoping that Safraz would play. Do you think K.L. got the nod over Safraz because he's a better fielder? Um, yes, that's what I said. I, I, I said that in the first podcast. I didn't necessarily want Safraz to play because at some point fielding matters. And goddamn was the fielding exceptional. By India, yeah, in, in this match, the catching, the quick reflexes, the confidence—that um, was really, really, really promising. Because if you remember India of like 10, 12 years ago, um, fielding was a massive point of drop off, and now, yeah, not, I don't want to give credit, but I think there's a lot of credit to be due to give to Veer out there because he's really pressured the team on fitness and athleticism. Um, and it shows because KL is really fit and his hands were fast. And Shubnam, Jaiswal. Um, mm. We just have a really strong slip quadrant, which, I mean, England fans can definitely relate to this. When it's bad, there's nothing genuinely, I think, more frustrating to watch than watching beautiful bowling outside edges and then catches put down. Um, mm. you never know when that's going to bite you in the back. So yeah, I think I think Sarfraz, I, I think there's a lot of expectations on our top order that we didn't need that bottom order batter to like like a middle order batter that we're going to need to carry a big load of runs. Um, mm-hmm. And so yeah, fielding matters, and that's been sort of my gripe with Sarfraz, despite the runs and everything. I said it in the last podcast. You have to hide him in the field, basically. Whereas KL is sort of like a leopard, and you can throw him anywhere. Well, yeah, because he keeps, right? So you should be, there's a little, maybe a little bit of fear of not having your gloves, but yeah, he, he, he's got the reaction time. And mm-hmm. Jesswell's catch, that was fast, but he, he got it. I mean, that was incredible. That's youth. That's, that's the youth. <laughs> and he's, it's fun. Uh, and that's a lot of confidence to play in that position at such an age. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that was mm-hmm. Sachin and Dravid and VVS back in the day, and now it's Rohit and Virat and Kale, all experienced players. And so to get a young gun in there, um, you kind of expect to see him there for the rest of his playing career, which is exciting, but he's this good this early. Yeah, and the one thing about Kale that probably I noticed the most is completely unrelated to cricket. Is his new hairstyle? Love it. He kind of made him look a bit like a like a, a Tollywood or Hollywood villain to me. No, to yeah, I feel... love it. yeah. I told you I want to be the most hated team in the world. Australia's had that privilege for the last two decades. I want to be that team. It's a privilege to be hated. <laughs> it means you're good, right? Yeah. Um, talking of good and heroes, um, Judeja and Ashwin, Ravi Chandran and Ashwin, I think, and I put this in the group, he's basically the cricketing version of Rajni Kant. He just comes out and just saves the day when all else is just. Because you know, when you watch a film, in the first act, everything just turns to shit. Like, just, that's the whole point of how films work the three act structure and everything. Mm-hmm. So, in the beginning, that the, you know, the. It starts off with good intention and, and, and the kind of hapless people, the town folk, they give it a go against the bad guys, but they kind of flounder like they're fish out of water and they're getting kind of just they're just splashing around. And the baddies are having their way, um, bowling really fast and, and taking wickets. And then comes Rajni Gant in the second act. And, and then he comes in, steadies the ship, and then the third act hammers it home. And that's what he did. Along with a, a kind of a, a nice little, you know, wingman or, or kind of assistant who was Ravindra Jadeja, who only got 86 out of 124. It's pretty rubbish, if you ask me. Uh, Ravindra Ashwin, 113 of 133 balls, 223 minutes, 11 fours, two sixes. Um, Jadeja, 10 fours and two sixes for, you know, a few runs less. That was quite some innings. Mm-hmm. It was, it was such a poised innings to have in that situation. 
India were staring 200 or 190, 185 all out dead on in the face. And at some point it was like 150 would have been a pretty remarkable turnaround after the way that we started. Um, and that's just something that you can't, that's not coachable. I don't think that's intangibles. That is the mental fortitude to know what you have to do to not play at any of the, like take unnecessary risks, be aggressive after a maiden to try to get some runs on the board, no dot ball pressure. And they rotated the strike beautifully too. Um, yeah, it was an important inning and that, that comes with grizzled, uh, veteran experience, honestly. Um, They've both done it for so long. They've both done it well for so long. Um, Dougie specifically went through a bit of a batting slump for a while that you weren't necessarily sure what he's going to bring every time he came to the crease. But there is, when, at least for me personally, whenever they walk out, despite what the score is, is, I still think to myself, I was like, all right, this innings isn't over until these two get out. Which to say mm. that about two of our most prolific bowlers is a real luxury that we have. Um it's like the same way when I'm whenever I'm watching an England match, and not to say they're the same batting caliber, but if England's five down but Root is batting, the other five wickets don't matter in any test match. As long as Root's batting, anything's capable. Um, and I think in a similar sort of context for uh, middle bottom order batters like Usher and Jadeja, they can get the necessary runs, and to do that in that situation at home in Chennai um, is memorable. It just it's good scenes, it's good vibes, it's and it should, and if uh, I think I should say that if this is my Chennai swan song, then it was a hell of a swan song. Yeah, he's what thirty eight, so it may well be the last test he plays. Um, assuming that the Chennai isn't given another test next year, mm-hmm. um, so that, I think that's the, that's the, the logic behind it. Um, certainly, the England series doesn't have any tests there anyway. Um, Akashdi played. He was he batted next, 17 runs, four fours, not too bad. Uh, and then Bumra, cheeky little seven, and that was that. Um, out of the, the bowlers, I mean, Hassan Mahmoud taking a, a fifer. It's quite it's quite impressive stuff um, from the Bangladesh bowlers, especially at the beginning. Uh, second innings, Bumra, he, he got some slap, didn't he? Four and a half he went for, mm-hmm. 4.5 and over, economy. Shocking. Shockingly bad. Any any words to say on the great man and, and the bowling uh, performance as a whole? Siraj, Gashdi, what, what were your thoughts after that? Or yeah. During and after the first innings? Um, uh, well, during it was that we made the right decision by playing three pacers because mm-hmm. of how capable the other two spin bowlers are. Um, boom. Boomer is going to be one of those players, and I think he might have slightly already exceeded that, but it's of the situation is you don't necessarily appreciate his greatness until he's no longer there. It's something that, I, to an extent, I think a lot of Indian fans take for granted uh, what he's capable of, that every ball could be a wicked-taking delivery. Um, yeah, I mean, this pace attack, when in rhythm is spectacular. And this is without Shami, who is probably our best second innings bowler that we have in terms Mm. of getting the ball to move. Um, And for what? I think this is what Morney's first test series coaching our pace attack and our bowlers. And I thought they had a really good uh, strategy, really, really profound discipline. And like I said, even that second innings when Bangladesh were trying to play shots, which they, I mean, they kind of had to because they weren't going to defend their way to a draw and they weren't going to defend their way to a win. Um, we didn't really give them any loose deliveries to really pounce on and take advantage of and really take the pressure off of them, which, like you said, Boomer got knocked around a little bit, but they weren't like necessarily too many bad balls. And the good balls, if you have four good balls in and over, you still always have to be um, ready for it and play on your toes. And it's not to discredit like Shanto, who's really good. Just a good player, scored good runs. Um, and, I mean, they get paid to play as well. So, Sure, I mean, like I was being slightly tongue-in-cheek. Um, it was, I think a lot of those runs came just, it's just hard for fast bowlers. It, it, you get a deflection, get a little edge here and there, and they just run for four. It was, it was one of those. It wasn't mm-hmm. necessarily that they were, I mean, sure, there were some great shots, but it wasn't really like 
he was getting hit the way someone like Siraj does, mm-hmm. like who actually was had a pretty decent economy um, in the first innings. Second, so India second innings, uh, just well out very quickly. Sharma again, Shubman comes in, he grinds out at 119, um, and not out in the end actually. Uh, Kohli, we've discussed, uh, he, he needs to start sweeping more, to be honest. Um, and then the big man, Rishabh Pant, already six centuries. The same as a certain Tala for a reason, MS Dhoni, who played a different role, let's be honest, and was also a captain. But nevertheless, that's that's quite a flex for um, for a young wicketkeeper. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a reason to hope that he'll go down as a top three wicketkeeping bat, batsman in red ball cricket. He's got all the potential in the world to do it. The game is suited for him. Uh, where it's easy to assume that, like, oh, T20 is more suited for him because of how he sort of bashes the ball around the field. But with the fielding placements always being more defensive uh, in test cricket, Rishabh just has a chance to play comfortably. He had the one-handed six again. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's... it's, it's, And it's an exciting brand of cricket, too. Um, Which, again, we we can't... we can't say that without thanking Ben Duckett for all of his contributions for teaching India how to play this sort of brand of cricket. Um, so thank you to him. Te- 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 teaching Bunt to uh, walk down to Anderson uh, yeah. was, was good. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's a credit to Basball, and, uh, yeah, which I'm sure they're playing Australia, so that has to be going well, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's not even talk about why we're paying, why there are one-day internationals basically in the last week of September in England. I mean, sure, at the moment, it's actually unseasonably good weather, but it's a hell of a risk uh, just, to, just to incorporate the 100, which now has at least, I think, does it have 100, one Indian owner? Something like that. Uh, but that's, a, that's another episode. Sorry. Back to not Basball itself, but what Basball taught. Let's, let's go back to Basball's students yeah. in India. Yeah, I mean, Rishabh, Rishabh is the prime, is what every... I always have this question which my dad and I discuss is like, if you could take one player from any other team to play for India, who would you take outside of Boomerah? I think most countries are picking Rishabh because of what he brings. Um, fielding his personality. Uh, I think seemingly just lights up the room. Everyone loves to be around him. Everyone wants to play with him. There wasn't as much discussion of, Oh, he hasn't played in so long. Does he just automatically walk back into the test squad? Uh, Jarrell played very well. Cahill can obviously keep, so it's not like an impending need for the gloves back there for him. Um, but he proved why he is a special talent in Test cricket. And he pr- he reminded us why he does just walk into the team after a borderline catastrophic car accident. Um, and it just, it, I can't imagine the sort of thinking that has to go inside the locker room on how to play a partnership of Shubnam and Rishabh or uh, KL and Rishabh where they're just two polar opposite types of batting. And so every over you got to change the fields, you got to move the lines, the lengths to sort of catch him off guard and he seemed to adapt to all of it. So it's an exciting, it was that, Austrian Century is obviously great given the um, ceremonial aspect of it, but Rishabh for the future of India cricket is exactly what you wanted to see. And he can babysit as well. Yeah. He can. <laughs> in his own backyard in the Gabba. Yeah, yeah basically. Um, right, so then came the, the final innings. I mean, it was nice. It was heartening to see Bangladesh get a bit of, a bit of a stand going on for the first wicket because uh, as much as it's fun to trounce them, we didn't particularly need a a one-sided affair because we needed to, the boys to get a bit of a test um, and a bit of a challenge, something just to, again, to warm them up, should we say, for Australia, for the the real ashes. Um, and at this point, right, a couple of wickets have gone down. First wicket, Bumrah, and you're thinking, all right, Ashwin didn't get any wickets in the first innings. He's got a century. He's not only got any wickets so far, He's a batting all-rounder. It's okay. It's okay. And then Shubman Gill took a great catch. Ashwin's got his first wicket, and he's off. And he finishes the innings with six. So 100 runs, six wickets, 
job done. And like you said, if this is my swan song, mate, what a swan song. Um, yeah, I think I game over. This is a Ratanker tweet, so I hope Ratanker stands mm. going well. But he's the first ever cricketer to have 20 plus 50s and 30 plus fivers in the history of Test cricket. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, that's just, I understood, and I think, I mean, he said it too after the toss, which he has to stop fucking saying um, what we would have done if we won the toss, because that tends to typically bite us in the ass. Um, but he even said that we would have batted first. But once that black soil, or once that red soil on the top, the bounce heavy soil sort of disintegrated and softened up, and the black soil started coming to the top. You kind of knew a fourth inning Zashwin is always going to be your Bowser. And yeah, you know what? You, you do. You think. You think. All right. You know what? Um, after the first kind of hour or so of play, fair enough, Bangladesh. Good toss to win. You know, you've got you've got the pace. You've got India kind of where you want, but you're still going to have to bat last against Ashwin and Jadeja. Jadeja. What? I mean, you may have won this bit, but at what cost? It's that kind of kind of thing, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean. To be fair, I think they were like 40 for 5 in the first innings right off the mm. job. So it didn't uh, it didn't necessarily help. And then, I mean, but after India started batting and we were, what, uh, 3 for 35 or something like that? You're something like, oh, crazy. did we just make a terrible mistake? And this is full credit to Hassan Mahmoud. He bowled beautifully. That guy is really exciting to watch, really disciplined. Um, it just, it was good pace cricket on his end. Um and we're lucky that Rana wasn't really uh, playing to his best potential. And I think there is some sort of credit to be given that India has really become um, grown to playing back foot on the pace, which mm-hmm. sort of screws around with Nitish Rana's um, strengths in his line. So I want to, I, I think he's, or Nahid Rana, not Nitish Rana. Uh, Nahid yeah. Rana. I think that he he has a lot more to offer, but India just countered him really, really well. And I don't think we have that same sort of um, strategy or capabilities to play Hassan Mahmoud, who was just ball after ball just where exactly he wanted to be. So mm-hmm. credit to him. But at some point, I think India's just better. I don't know, there's no, yeah. there's, it's not no, it's not like Bangladesh played a torren- torrentially bad test match. It's not like... When Pakistan lost, you could say, like, Bangladesh played really well, but Pakistan also played terribly. Bangladesh didn't play their A game, but it's not like they're a bad cricketing team, and this isn't, this is not like, oh, okay, India won, hunky-dory, we take it, Bangladesh, whatever. Um, it's a good team, and like I said, to an extent, it is a warm-up for us, but yeah, they did, this is what you sort of expect out of a Bangladesh series. I think there was a little bit more hype going into it because what they did to Pakistan but like I said, Dan, I think this is that was more of a Pakistan issue than Bangladesh just flexing on them. Yeah, look, I think uh, Bangladesh were probably stronger than Pakistan anticipated because um, they have improved. Um, and then the Pakistani cricket's going through its own kind of osmosis, metamorphosis, whatever you want to say. Sure. Um, yeah, o- honorable mentions to Akash Deep. Um, his, his two and two was really exciting. Um, and also Shakib Al Hassan tried to. A cheeky little tactic of uh, wearing a strap, like a basically a lace around his neck and then holding it in his mouth. I'm thinking it must be so soggy, like while he's just kind of holding it to, to keep his positioning right. But you know what? He's trying something different. And um, if you're thinking outside the box, why not? Talking of Shakib, um, he is uh, a member of parliament for the party that was ousted recently in the, what do you want to call it, takeover. Um, student coup, regime change, whatever's happening in Bangladesh, which has led to quite a bit of situation, a lot of violence, um, both against kind of political distance and, and, and minorities, uh, religious minorities the same. I say not ethnic minorities, because basically they're all Bengali, they're all ethnically the same. It's just, yeah, uh, a different kind of uh, philosophy, shall we say. But there's been news saying that uh, officials of, of the Bangladesh Cricket Board are saying Shakib won't be harassed on his return to Bangladesh, which um, is nice. Like, I don't think anyone should be harassed for political reasons. And probably, um, if he plays well in the second test, we'll know that, that the reason he played the way he did in the first and got slapped and got out very quickly 
um, is because he was worried about his safety. So there's that. Um, we're going to get on to... Even if he plays the second test, I'm pretty sure he hurt his hand. So there's there's a semi-decent chance that he has to sit this one out. But He may have to go home early then. Um, and then, yeah, we'll know. We'll, then we'll definitely know sooner than later whether he's getting harassed or... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Asylum in, in, in Kolkata because he's, I know he's got um, friends there and paid for KKR and all the rest of it. Um, right. Um, we're going to get on to the second test in a minute. I just wanted to talk some other madness that's happened. IPL already, like, there's <laughs> seen changes. Ricky Ponting's ended his stint at Delhi. He's now the coach of Punjab Kings on a four year contract. Karan, you were talking about how you could barely remember anything um, that memorable that, that Punjab have been in, involved in, whether that's Kings Eleven Punjab or Punjab Kings. Yeah, and I think uh, are you going to well, are you going to ask the new coach? <laughs> well, the new coach is is crazy because he's saying things like, "I'm not going to accept mediocrity, and I've come to win, and all this kind of stuff," and as someone who's been a Punjab fan and only ever a Punjab fan, bro, we don't do that here. Like, that's, that's not how things are done. We, we have some great talent. We've had Ashwin play for us. Um, and we just have some boardroom madness, means which we're never really going to do anything interesting in the IPL. We're just there. We were threatened to do something. But, yeah, oh. we don't do that kind of winning here. Well, then it's probably the right coach because, I mean, I don't think Ricky Ponting, despite being one of my least favorite fucking cricketer and house of horror, dream-snatching, heartbreaking piece of shit batters that I've uh, witnessed for fucking too long, um, he hasn't done jack shit either in the IPL. Uh, Delhi hasn't won anything. I don't, a couple of times they had formidable teams, kind of underwhelmed, didn't make the playoffs, made the playoffs, didn't perform well. So if what you're talking about Punjab sports as a whole is true, and I've got no reason to doubt you, then Ricky Ponting is bang on what you're looking for in terms of mediocrity. So I should clarify, it's not Punjab sports as a whole. Punjab generally has a culture of winning, like hockey is, for example, and all the rest of it. I just mean Kings Eleven or oh, the IPL team itself specifically has some kind of weird boardroom madness going on between essentially two ex fiancés Ness and, and Prithi and um, it's, it's the whole dynamic is weird. Like they've had some great players. Even actually, um, our friend Mark um, asked me after this IPL. He goes, "Who would you keep?" And I named a few players. And and, and I said, "Well, I keep these guys." Actually, he was one of them. Uh, I think we're part of the other. And I said, "But actually, fundamentally, I think there's something wrong in the setup in the boardroom." Uh, you mentioned Ponting not doing much. Ponting's whole rationale for IPL really. And he was asked about Australia. He was asked about India as well, actually, I think, on, on, a, on a podcast or some of the interviews. And he said, actually, I've got a young family. I feel cool. I can go over four months, do it, come back and tend to my wine farm or whatever he do- it is he does. <laughs> so as a retirement option, I feel it's kind of a sweet deal for him, a sweet, sweet gig. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great gig. The IPL, is a, it's, that's one of my things about uh, franchise cricket, while well, it does diminish from the international game, and I'm a, I'm a test cricket international truther, so IPL is the furthest thing that I want for. It's a no-brainer for players and coaches. It's good money. It's not a lot of time. I don't understand why players get upset whenever they play any franchise cricket. So it all makes sense for Ricky Ponting. And speaking back on the fundamental issues, whenever you have Johnny Barristow and a current brother on your team, that's just fundamentally fucked up. So that's just going to be hard to bounce back from either. Um, <laughs> Johnny's, but the, Johnny was had a he had a great form. He was in great form for for I think uh, Hyderabad for a while, wasn't he? Yeah, and then that, uh, well, yeah, maybe he's not done so much up up north. Uh, the current brothers, I think the third current brother is now eligible to play for. Shut the fuck up! There's a third. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, I think he, he can play for an African country. I'm not sure which one. I, I would assume it's Zimbabwe because of their dad, but I think he can also pay for another one as well. I'm not sure which one. Uh, it's England knows better. Yeah, I don't think he's anywhere near the England setup. Um, but it's, oh, to be honest, beyond the scope of a, a podcast about India, uh, unless <laughs> he's playing in the Tamil, uh, the Premier League or, or whatever. Um, 
I was like, I'll rant about the Cardin brothers on any given platform at any given time. I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> we will get onto that, no doubt, um, as the as the episodes roll on. Shall we um, move on to the second tester? Mm-hmm. This time in Kanpur um, and on black soil, not red soil. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned earlier spin, uh, low bounce of spin is what we're expecting. So kind of knee rollers uh, and, and kind of bold off your pads, that kind of stuff. Or, or what are you thinking? Yeah, no, I think it's yeah, it's going to be spin dominant. I think it's going to be one of those classic matches in India where spin comes out in the first session of the first day. And uh, it's, I guess, I mean, it's the sort of pitch in India that England would be crying about for being a bad pitch. So I think that's really probably the best way to explain it. Um, it's going to be, I mean, it bodes well for India, obviously, because that's going to be our, our strongest suit, both in terms of batting and, I guess, not as of late. But it's where you always feel India's got an upper hand that's on a spin-friendly pitch. Now the only question that we have to decide is Guldi Paraksha. On, on who takes, I would assume, understanding he played his match, he played his role great Akashdeep spot. Also, I mean, you, but, look, I mean, yes, you would take, you would obviously think the third seamer would lose his spot. Um, but it is five days between tests. I mean, yes, they finished on Sunday, so they've had an extra day of rest. But is there a case for resting one of Bumrah's? Well, really, Bumrah, I would say. Is there a case for resting in load management? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's that is um, probably the yeah. No, I get that. And if you want to get Akash some more game time, then by all means, rest Boomer. You'll, you'll never hear me gripe about resting Boomer Virat Rohit. I think if that's what they need, if that's what the team needs, and we're playing a team that we should beat with or without them, then yeah, that's fine with me. It just I was thinking if we want to put our best eleven out there, you drop deep, and then we just have to decide between cool deep and. Archer. Right. Or the alternative is you pay him, play him in this one and you don't. You pretty much rest him in the ODI so he's fresh for New Zealand. Because New Zealand, you need him. You need Bummer. Yeah, we need, yeah, we need that series for the WTC qualification. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, if you rest him for the red ball, or rest him for white ball, then that's obviously ideal in my world. Because, I mean, this, these little bilateral white ball series are the most meaningless cricket you could possibly find. It's just a set of boots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, um, I mean, as, as, as much as we'd mock, I uh, would mock um, any cricket board for for these games. Um, knowing that old kind of state players, Ranji players, now get a pension um, from the BCCI. I'm kind of, I know they've got loads of money, but I'm not so, I, I'm not as critical of them. Knowing that they are looking after older people, uh, older players who who you know played in a different time where the money just wasn't there. Um, yeah. So. I think it's a bit more forgiving. Yeah, it's one of those things where I was like, oh, that's a lot of cricket. I'm going to watch every ball. Don't really matter. <laughs> I mean, it's meaningless. And they might as, yeah, and they might as well play some randoms anyway. Like, it's yeah. okay. Um, so that's fine. I'll be excited if we uh, win and say it's nothing if we lose. So it's, it's a kind of an emotional, decent situation to be in. So I just yeah. feel like we won that series spectacular since we lost, whatever. Yes. Um, any... Other changes you would like up the order? Usually the top five, top six as it is? No, I think this is this is like a prove your work sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't make too many changes up there. Uh, I just, I, I lean towards selecting Akshar strictly because probably, I mean, I guess it's counterintuitive. Strictly because I don't necessarily have the full fake confidence in our top five that they're going to score runs and you can't always rely on... You can't expect a bank on Ushwin and Jadeda to put up a 150-run partnership. And Akshar is well, capable with the bat. Kuldeep's not too shabby a batsman, though. He's not, but he's not Akshar. No. What about Akshar for KL? Um, no, I don't, I don't think... I think Kale's sort of playing for his livelihood now. I think he's going to try to prove it, make it to the New Zealand series, and maybe try to squeeze his way into the World Test Championship. Um, and not in the same vein as Virat and Rohit. To an extent, I think he's earned it. Uh, he's just been a backbone for India for so long that you give him that opportunity. 
Um, and I don't, I don't think we need to play six bowlers, not against this team. You can see that I'm just trying to shoehorn four spinners into the team. That's really what yeah. I'm trying to do. There's, yeah. there's, no, there's no other reason. Yeah, we should um, rush okay. Bumrah and Siraj. Fuck it. Yeah, get Bumrah <laughs> to bowl some dibbly dubblies. Um, you know... In terms of KL, I saw some mad stats uh, about him. He's he's got the lowest average of, of uh, like like thirty five of, of batsmen who have played. I think over twenty or fifty tests or something for India. But also, he's the only ones have centuries in England, Australia, and South Africa. It's like this bizarre stat, which yeah. kind of sums up his inconsistency because he can just he will just like pull out a century out of nowhere and then just do nothing. Yeah, but I think that's one of the few things that I like about the way the BCC has been working out the last five or six years is that back in the day, you have two bad innings. You're terrified that you'll never see the playing 11 again. Um, mm-hmm. These guys will stick it out, especially with the guys that have proven themselves and tried, uh, tried and proven. So, um, and I've switched too. I would have, I used to be, it could be maturity or whatever the fuck. Um, where mine was like one bad innings, banish him, send him to Madagascar. I never want to see him wear an India cricket jersey again. Um, but now it's different. We're a, I think I've played 10 innings of cricket now in my Dallas league. And my last match, I scored one run and my average went up. So I think I've truly understood the, the, the sheer horrors that come with batting and the difficulty that it is. So, yeah, I, I, like, you know, you know what you're going to get from Kale. Either you get a master class or a disaster class. Um, but when he hits that master class, you're like, how do we ever think about not having having him in our playing eleven? But it's the other nine matches. You're like, what the fuck is he doing in our playing eleven? Um, so I think that he's partially, probably at that level where you give him a couple of extra chances that you wouldn't give to the younger players out of right now. I wish they go to Madagascar. They'd have a great team. Um, if, if all these random cost were there, can you believe that? Yeah. Um, just a quick little factoid for you. In the last test played in Kanpur against New Zealand in 2021, India had uh, Ashwin Jadeja and Aksa. I think it's probably fair to say that uh, uh, Gulip wasn't really in and around the test team at that point. That's probably why. But, um, but yeah, um, these three have got form there. I think, should we? should we... Call it then, Karan. Should we leave it there? Yeah. Do you have any predictions? You, you're the only one that has to get one right now. Yeah, but my predictions are notoriously bad. So, <laughs> well, then pick a Bangladesh one. <laughs> I've got one. Uh-huh. Check this out. Runs will be scored and wickets will be taken. I don't know about that. All right. All right. If it rain, if it rains, then uh, if the game's rained out, then my prediction will still be wrong. But I think that's the high chance. <laughs> that would be, be so fucking funny. <laughs> Especially after the, the Afghanistan game. Um, already they got rained out, you know, a week or so ago. So, yeah, look, I, that, that's, I mean, I, I think w- most people would say an India win. Um, and I think it's fair to say that. It's just a question of how badly India bat against spin as to how quickly that happens. Um, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, that, that, that's what I would say. Yeah, well, the only prediction I really have is I think between Rohit and Virat, one of them scorer. Uh, century in one of the innings. Yeah, that's you, right? Yeah, certainly, right? Uh, just like, uh, or Vera just saves it for the World Test Championship, where he just doesn't score runs here in New Zealand series and then scores like he did in the T20 World Cup final, where he just plays the most important hand he could possibly have. So, yeah. that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, well, I will say, let's, let's just hope for runs from the rut, I think is what you're saying, at some point. Yeah, a century specifically. Um, a century, not now, okay. when, he, when he's lifting the mace in one year time. Yeah, um, we have a lot of PTSD around that mace. Right. Um, <laughs> I've been there twice. Yeah. yeah. Well, this Fuck time... Um, Hopefully Sri Lanka makes it. That would be fun. It would be more fun if it's Australia, uh, Australia get there. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to see another Travis Head fucking 180. So, oh, yeah. then he says his name. I know. I know. <sighs> All right, shall You've we? got Travis, Travis Head's um, copied your moustache style. That's why it is. He's, uh, I've basically copied it. I'm his bitch. He owns me. And I'm well aware <laughs> of it. So. Credit work first, right. Thank you for listening to this episode of uh, Kumble Corner. 
Um, he's been growing my meta, and I've been Super Joshi. We still are, actually. Um, <laughs> don't forget to hit subscribe on the uh, button below. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on any kind of app, then make sure you hit subscribe and follow it. And also, tell other people about us, because we're quite amazing. Two of our mates weren't here today, Knuckle Bandit and Vatankar Bandit But they will be back as soon as they get their priorities straight and put the podcast <laughs> first. Um, <laughs> until next time. Bye. Take it easy. <laughs>